TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Syria said it remains determined to reconquer the Golan Heights region from Israel. Turkish President Erdogan meets his Russian counterpart Putin in the Black Sea resort of Sochi to deliberate deepening military cooperation. France warns Iran must return to the nuclear talks in Vienna to avoid an escalation. Syria remains determined to reconquer the Golan Heights region from Israel and is also convinced that it will manage to expel the U.S. and Turkish militaries respectively from the northern regions of its war-torn country. In an address to the United Nations General Assembly earlier this week, Syrian Foreign Minister Faisal Mikdad proclaimed that the Damascus regime reserves all rights under international law to use all means available to reassert control over all of Syria. With regard to its southern front, Syria's top diplomat went on to reiterate that Damascus continues to regard all of it the lands it lost after attacking Israel in 1967 as Syrian lands under occupation. السيد الرئيس تواصل إسرائيل ومنذ العام 1967 احتلالها لجزء غال من الأراضي السورية ألا وهو الجولان ولذلك فإن الجمهورية العربية السورية تعيد التأكيد على تمسكها الراسخ بحقها في استعادة كامل الجولان السوري المحتل حتى خط الرابع من حزيران لعام 1967 it is important to know that after the deadly conflict erupted in Syria, officially on March 15, 2011, Damascus subjugated itself to both Moscow and Tehran, with the latter utilizing dozens of its proxy militias from throughout the region to ensure the Assad regime's survival. Consequently, the Assad regime managed to reassert control over much of the country, yet the chief challenges ahead, most notably vis-à-vis -vis the northwestern Idlib governorate, where the Turkish military is present, and the northeastern governorate of Al Hasaka, where U.S. forces are stationed, are seemingly frustrating the leadership in Damascus, which is seeking to secure additional support from the West's most powerful adversary. China is a real international power, both uh, economic and military. Of course, nobody wishes to use the military aspect, but the economic aspect is there. China has supported Syria in the Security Council of the United Nations. Uh, more than eight vetoes were casted by uh, China in support of the Syrian people against terrorism for, uh, I mean, uh, uh, ending the uh, inhuman uh, economic uh, sanctions. Uh, but all of us are suffering. I mean, uh, whether in Russia, Syria, Iran, China, among others, uh, uh, any attack against one of us is attack against all the others, including uh, other independent sovereign nations. Uh, and during my meetings with the Minister Wang Yi, we finalized uh, issues related to the bilateral cooperation in both economic, political and cultural uh, fields. Uh, we have never been so close with China than uh, this time. It is important to know that clashes have intensified in recent days in the northwestern Idlib governorate between the Islamist Hayat Takhir al-Sham, which is manned by former members of the Islamic State in Al-Qaeda, versus Syrian regime forces backed by Iranian proxy militias and Russian aerial support. Consequently, Turkey, which regards itself as the protectorate of Idlib, 
In light of potential implications that may arise out of a full-scale Syrian offensive, have deployed additional forces to the Syrian territory. In tandem, Ankara is seeking to alleviate tensions on its southwestern front. Russian President Vladimir Putin welcomed his Turkish counterpart Recep Tayyip Erdogan at the Russian Black Sea resort of Sochi earlier today, during which the latter sought to secure assurances from his host on reinforcing a ceasefire arrangement for Idlib governorate, which was agreed upon by the two leaders approximately 17 months ago on March of 2020. And while it is too early to determine if Erdogan's request of Putin will bear fruit, Moscow is keen on bolstering its bilateral relations with Ankara, since the latter is increasingly frustrated with the United States under the Biden administration. After U.S. President Joe Biden refused to grant his Turkish counterpart an audience on the sidelines of the United Nations General Assembly, President Erdogan asserted that he and the American leader had failed to bridge their differences. Subsequently, Erdogan accused the United States of supporting terror organizations in northwestern Syria, and earlier this week he announced his decision to expand on Ankara's military procurements from Moscow. More on this by Lisa Bernard. Who is going to share our security risks? Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan on Sunday said his government still intends to buy a second batch of S-400 missile defense systems from Russia, a move that could deepen a rift with Washington and trigger fresh U.S. sanctions. Washington says the S-400s pose a threat to its F-35 fighter jets and to NATO's broader defense systems. Turkey says it was unable to procure air defense systems from any NATO ally on satisfactory terms. Appearing on CBS's Face the Nation, Erdogan said only Turkey can make decisions for itself. Biz in the future, nobody will be able to interfere in terms of what kind of defense systems we acquire, from which country, at what level. Nobody can interfere with that. We are the only ones to make such decisions. The U.S. imposed sanctions on Turkey's Defense Industry Directorate, its chief, and three other employees in December following the country's acquisition of a first batch of S-400s. Talks continued between Russia and Turkey about the delivery of a second batch, which Washington has repeatedly said would almost certainly trigger new sanctions. Back to the Black Sea resort of Sochi, where President Erdogan highlighted to President Putin the deepening relations between Moscow and Ankara, underscoring that it is evident to all. <laughs> Meanwhile in Moscow, the director of Iran's atomic energy organization, Mohammad Islami, held a meeting with the director general of Russia's state atomic energy corporation, Alexei Likhachov, as part of Tehran's aspirations to bolster its cooperation with Moscow on matters of its nuclear program. Prior to the meeting, Islami responded to a threat voiced by the United States that it would exert diplomatic retaliation within days unless IAEA inspectors are granted access to Iran's Karaj nuclear workshop. Islami insisted that Washington is not in a position to comment on how Iran and the IAEA work together. He went on to voice regret over Tehran's latest adopted narrative that the IAEA supposedly under pressure from the United States and what he referred to as the Zionist regime has replaced political cooperation with a political approach. Separately in Vienna, Iran's envoy to the International Atomic Energy Agency, Gari Babadi, revealed that he suggested to his superiors in Tehran that it should consider scaling back its cooperation with the IAEA, saying, quote, my belief is that if the agency can't act independently, professionally and impartially, there is no need for us to continue our very transparent cooperation with it. Consequently, in Paris, a French presidency official told reporters that Iran must return to the negotiating table in Vienna to try and reinvigorate the 2015 nuclear agreement to avoid an escalation. The official further stressed that world powers negotiating with Iran 
needed to maintain a unified front and that China especially needed to express itself and act in a more determined way. Nevertheless, rather than being united on the matter, the P5 plus 1 is evidently comprised of two separate camps, as was evident in remarks made by Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov at a press briefing that was given prior to his address to the UN General Assembly. Iran, Iran не делает ничего, что было бы ему запрещено, поскольку он соблюдает и договор и о нераспространении, и соблюдает дополнительный протокол к соглашению о гарантиях, а он не соблюдает сейчас большинство из своих обязательств, которые заключались в СВПД. И которые сейчас не действуют просто-напросто, потому что американцы эту, эту договоренность разрушили. И речь идет о том, чтобы ее восстановить в полном объеме. И тогда у Ирана э, будут все основания, э, вернее, не будет оснований делать какие-либо исключения из того, что он э, взял на себя, обязался выполнять. It is worth mentioning that Israeli National Security Council Director Eyal Hulata is scheduled to travel to Washington next week for meetings with his American counterpart, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. The visit will also include a session of the Israel-America Strategic Forum on Iran. Thank you for watching us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up the people of Azerbaijan in prayer for their salvation and peace alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers, of course, for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Essen, wishing you an Erev Tovu Mevorach, and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.